Good evening, it's um, Jeanette Stevens here from my home studio which I've called Farm Forest Ceramics in North Worcestershire. It's 20 to 7 in the evening and I've come to have a couple of hours, chill out after work. This is my happy place. Somebody mentioned on a YouTube, could they see how I do my glazing on a video? Never for one minute thought anybody would be interested in seeing that. Even if one person is, I'm, I'm game for it, I'll give it a go. I class myself as a beginner, I've been doing this since January so I'm now just completing 10 months. First three months didn't do an awful lot. I've only been glazing maybe for about four months so this is all new to me. I've learned everything from what I've watched on YouTube channels and then I'm adding my own slant of a little bit of organisation in here because unfortunately I'm a little bit OCD with organisation. So I don't know if I'm doing it right or wrong um, but if anybody's interested I'm doing it. <laughs> So this is my stoneware which I threw about three months ago. It is stoneware fleck. I threw by accident. I thought it was millennium clay. Um, got the wrong packet out. Oh dear me. Um, so I'm interested to see if there's any fleck that shows up. I have waxed every single bottom um, and I've slightly, lightly um, sanded any rough elements that I saw. I also have washed them in water to take away any dust in my prep. I love this bit because you get to see your line where you've waxed and if it's a nice sharp line or not. Um, I like that bit. So I've done that with all of them. The way I organise myself is I've created my own little sheets that I follow. Let me just take one for example. I don't know if you can see on here very easily, but I just created my some, some little sheets. This number up here is the actual piece number. So this piece here, I've actually put a number 56 in the bottom for my own reference. I've got a card on here. This is what I leave with the pot all the way through. So I'll take photographs at every stage I'm doing, pop this in my photo, and then afterwards it's a lot easier for editing to group all my number 56 together for my own reference and any little reels that I want to do. So that's the pot reference. I put up here the clay, which is fleck. Then the firing, which is on this one, it's going to be fired at cone six. And then there's different shapes for different things that I've put. Some are mug shaped, square mug shaped. So these are the different stages. And literally the felt pen is where I'm going to put my glaze. This is the glaze I'm going to put and how many coats. So I just literally mark off each one. For example, here, I want to do blue surf on the outside and the inside two coats, but then I only want to put a third coat on the outside. Then I want to put my cordovan just on the tip and over and three coats so I can mark them all off. Down the bottom here is my test tile that I'm actually trying to recreate. So in this instance, it's O2 F and O2 back B. O2F is Testile O2 with the front. So on my front, I did three coats of blue surf. Um, so that's why on the front or the outside, once I've done one, two, three coats, that will be on the outside of the cup. But on the inside of the mug, I want that effect, which was two coats of blue surf with cordovan. Hence, on my inside, I'm not going to do blue surf and I'm just putting cordovan on the tip inside and out, three coats. So I, this is just my method. It works for me, I can follow it, but I can also organise my working colours. So for example, all this colour, I will do Norse Blue. This colour, I will do Winter Wood. When I get to the second layer and the colour changes, they'll move aisles. So I'll get one glaze out and I'll do one run. Just helps me be a little bit more efficient in how I'm doing things. So they've all, they're all on one of my um, squares. That I had that I put on the wheel. I have my banding wheel and then what I've done is I've got some old t-shirts and so let me just say I'm going to start this one. So this one is um, number 60 and 61. So on this one I'm creating its textile that 20F, the front of it, which is sea salt um, all over, inside and out, three coats and after leather, but at the moment all I'm interested in sea salt, it's number 60 and 61. So because I've got this video going, I can actually use that for clipping, so that's when I show my video 60. And then on my square bat, I put a piece of fabric, usually a small one, stops it um, skidding around, gives it a little bit more um, softness on the edge on the foot of the piece. So I have this for reference to see what I'm doing. I'm doing number 61 and I want sea salt. So I have 
before my glaze is to hand with my little hearts on to show sea salt. So sea salt is just a nice plain indescript neutral colour. I then, the way I do it is I don't um, shake it because I find it causes glaze to stick in the rim an awful lot. I try and keep that as clean as possible. Put the lid in there. I've got some old cake decorate. I used to be a cake decorator. That's actually what I qualified when I left school. So I've got a load of cake decorating tools. So I tend to use this um, to stir. And sea salt, a lot of them have crystals in the bottom, as you know. So sea salt doesn't have many. I'd imagined it would have more. So I tend to be giving this a good old spoon as I'm chatting away. Um, I have got two different types of glaze brushes. I first bought some off Amazon. They were just some standard ones um, that somebody had been using for glazing, inexpensive, off Amazon. They were okay. I thought they did okay to start off with, but they were losing hairs. So then I treated myself to some Mako glazes, um, brushes. So these are soft, soft Fan, Mako Soft Fan CB604. Wow, what a difference. I use brush on glazes. Um, I'm not ready yet to go for dipping. I'm not, I told you I'm a beginner. So I do brush on. These brushes, this Mako Soft Fan CB04, I've got four of them. They make such a difference. They just hold the glaze. It just goes on. Oh, it's gorgeous how it goes on. So well worth, but I've only got three of those. I need to invest in a few more. And I will tend to brush this off with my brush and I also have water in old yoghurt cartons that I'll use. I'll tend to try and keep certain colour tones in certain brushes. Oh, I should have wet my brush to start off with. Give it a good soak before putting it into the glaze. So I'm going to turn this over initially. And then in you go. I usually do a couple of scoops off the side to get the water out and make sure if I've got any crystals in there, I'm picking them up. A nice heavy brush load of glaze. I think the secret I've heard is that however much glaze you put in the brush, be consistent with whatever you do. Um, actually, that's not dry yet from when I just wet it up. Just the top bit where the wax is. And oh, I'm so therapeutic. I just realised that where I've put the video, it's not that easy to see what I'm doing. I might have to have a change of tack there. So I'll go to there. And then I'll turn over and then this one it was inside and out. So there we go. So I would now, on there, quite easily on the table, just mark off my first marker, sea salt leather. That one's done. I've got two on the go and I can now pick up the wood, which saves me having to touch the pot and place that down. I tend to have old wet pieces of wood um, as my wear boards. This one happened to have a glossy surface on it, which when I was five, six years old, this used to be a coffee table at home that my dad Recycle before throwing it out. He used to keep everything, kept it, he's trimmed it all down. So now this is a piece of my childhood. I remember playing Lego on here with my tiny tears when I was six, seven years old. So this is our old coffee table from the lounge. So it's now my glazing top. So what's the next one I'm doing? So the next one is a Galaxy. So Galaxy is... I've got a little bit of texture on this one I'm trying. So Galaxy is number 64. That there. Afterwards, when I finish glazing these, 
what I will tend to do is take them over to the other part of my studio and I'll just try take a, a photo of each pot um, after it's glazed but I'll tend to take it on my shelf that's on my shelf and then just below the shelf in the photo is the number and when I crop it I get rid of the number but it just helps me index everything easier anything for an easy life so what is number 64 so number 64 I'm going to try and create this effect on this mug crazy how much they shrink isn't it so this is galaxy and to create this effect I had two coats this is two coats of galaxy three coats everything run off so two coats of galaxy and lime shower and then that's going to leave me just with two coats of galaxy on the inside let's see what that works out so galaxy do you know i thought galaxy was going to be my favorite glaze because i saw lots of other potters on youtube instagram posting galaxy on different clays granted a lot of them were american potters and they have different clays to us so i'm sure that's potentially what's causing the main differences also my firing i'm firing at cone six um and i don't know if firing slightly different so i'm still experimenting with that but my galaxy didn't blow me away as much as i expected them to instead Blue Hydrangea was the glaze that literally, wow, everything I did with Blue Hydrangea was incredible. So this is my Galaxy test style. It's also got a lot of crystals in this one, which creates all those effects. So reading the instructions is very important to make sure you get loads of the crystals on. If these are all saying they're dinner safe, sea salt. I'll mix this with this pot of sea salt because I'm going to have a go at collecting all the glaze chips. So apparently all these pots of water, you skim it all off after it settles to the bottom and um, then collect the bits of clay at the bottom and when they're dried out, keep the chips and then put them onto a pot and see what glaze effects you get. Oh, great fun. I'm going to give that a go. Right. It's a bit harder, I find, to make sure you can get all the crystals in. I wonder if it went to the handle. My handles have got curly bot bottoms, which were courtesy of a brilliant tutor. I had five lessons with a tutor local here, Chris Greening, and near Worcester. Um, brilliant, brilliant tutor. Oh, God. I had a taster session with him, that's how I got into pottery. Um, my best friend bought us a taster session to just have a play and have a go at throwing something on the wheel. Chris was a brilliant tutor, we got on very well and that's what started me so I went back for a few more lessons, he's helped me learn how to throw, I've then just literally been playing through lockdown and um, then the rest I've been learning on my own. So I've got one more lesson to go which we're going to do shortly, uh, hopefully he's going to help me understand how I throw more than 500 grams because that's my limit right now. <laughs> Not very big, is it? It's a mug. I've done two bowls and they were a kilo each, but wow, they were so much harder. It's a miracle they came out. Um, certainly wasn't very. Um, well, I've got the right words. Like it's, they certainly weren't thrown in a way that I think they should have been thrown. <laughs> Trying to centre. Oh my goodness me. They were going everywhere. I was laughing to myself and I was exhausted at the end of it. Wow, what a workout. <laughs> so yeah, I got a lesson, my last lesson at the end of November, I think it is, where Chris is going to help me understand how to throw bigger weights. <laughs> That'll be fun. I mark off I've done one coat of my galaxy. Oh, shall I have a go at my Norse blue? I'm going to do two Norse blue. 
also because my Norse blue is handy at the bottom. Norse blue. This was one of my first glazes um, that I had. I only had six batch, batches, six um, pots of clay when I very first started. And I did lots of combinations just with those six. Um, I love the Norse blue, absolutely love the Norse blue. So what I'm gonna try on this one is Norse blue with frosted lemon. So what I love about this is just the shimmers of lemon shards all the way through. So I'm going to throw, sorry, I'm going to glaze one of my big bowls. I can't believe I threw something as big as that. It started off one and a half kilos. Didn't end up one and a half kilos because I couldn't throw it. <laughs> I lost half a kilo in the process. Very much a wonky, a wonky throw. I don't know why I always refer to my pots as she or her. I think the odd one I do a he, but it definitely looks feminine this piece, doesn't it? <laughs> They're like your babies. Somebody said to me, why do you hang on to them for so much? It's like giving birth to puppies. They need to have eight weeks at home. <laughs> I don't like to see them go anywhere. I don't make many, so it's... <laughs> Number 67. Sixty-seven, put that underneath the cloth. So sixty-seven, this is all over. soon right I'm going to stop now for a little bit because I need to go get something to eat and um, see my hubby for half an hour and then I'm more than likely going to pop back over do a little bit more what I want to try and do is get one coat on everything um, and then tomorrow um, after work I'll try and do more coats um, okay I'll see you in a little while bye I've got 20 minutes before tea's ready my hubby's cooking for me so um, I've got a chance to do another 20 minutes. What can I do? Let's have a look. So, frosted lemon. some second and third coats on a few things just repeating what I've done before 
and I'm now at the point where I'm ready to maybe do my second colour and try and move my things around on the table, um, which is where my sheets really help me out. So more than that, you're going to fast forward a lot of this because you don't want to watch it all. Maybe you can watch any of it, but... <laughs> Um, right, so where am I at? I've got quite a few now that I'm ready to go on to the second colour, but what I try and do is coordinate so I've only got one brush out of a colour at the same time. So I've got one here that's about to go on to Norse Blue. This one needs a second coat of Norse Blue, so I'm going to do this one first. So this is my bowl which I am attempting to recreate this effect. Um, so I just need to do it all the way around on my Norse blue. So, my thought process here is um, I don't want it dripping, so I don't want to put it on too thick so it's dripping, so I want it just slightly on the inside but not much. Don't want it dribbling down. I'm doing three coats. So. so I'm gonna hold it upside down. So it doesn't drip up the mug. Then on the handle, just to that point. And yeah, just on there. That's all I'm going to do. Then that's got to have three coats. What I am careful of is that if it starts to drip, I will just a bit of heat. Just stop the drip. So I'm really trying hard to get a soft grey um, effect. For my son and daughter-in-law, they've got a grey, soft grey um, colour scheme at home and I'm d really wanting to make them some nice mugs and coasters. And it's really hard to try and get a leather, not a leather, a grey effect. So I'm looking maybe at this effect. So let's see, they're not overly keen on all the runs, so I don't want it to be heavy on the runs. So I've got sea salt on the bottom. So these are handleless coffee cups. My son's got one of these really lovely um, coffee machines, like the barista machines. So he really likes the oh, handleless mugs as well. So let's give them a try and if they don't work, well, just got to keep practicing. <laughs> so again, really, I think I'm just going to go on the outside and again, not too much. I don't even know if I do. Maybe I don't do the inside. 
you think? I'm asking you. Nobody's going to answer me. <laughs> this is where sometimes it would be nice to have um, somebody to ask while you're doing it. So what do I do? I think just <laughs> I don't know. Ooh, look at this. This is frosted lemon. So I'm trying to recreate this. Um, On the outside and then I just want cut Dovan on the inside so this glaze has really been a favorite from my first batch um, it's got this richness to it it's beautiful really really shiny glaze um, and I like it on the inside of a mug really love it on the inside of a mug so it's a bit dusty but this is the inside of that is Cordovan. The bottom of this is Cordovan. This is Cordovan with ancient copper over the top. Um, but I love how that, it's a beautiful, rich colour for an inner coat. So, right, I need another, another pot. Now on this one, I've got to be careful not to get any cordovan dripping down that frosted lemon. <laughs> so, oh, that was close. <laughs> Caught it on the, um, this coat's nice as well, this one. Drying quick. First coat on the inside, you forget how quick that dries when you've been layering up the rest. So that's my first one. And then now I need to go. Let's see if I can find the scent. Better off this way. You never know how far to go down. Saturday morning here in my home studio Far Forest Ceramics and I just thought I'd come and tag on a little clip showing you the pieces I finished glazing last night so I continued doing my um, glazes the coats in the various things um, didn't think it worth videoing that so let me show you so these are my finished pieces 
Um, so I'm now going to, they've dried nicely overnight, I'm going to just take photographs of each one, hopefully try and find the relevant textile that I had, and then those are for reference for later, then I'm going to fire up Kitty and get her going. Ooh, ooh. show you later, bye! ready to fire Kitty up. She's currently 15 degrees so in my stoneware firings I use program 22, sorry, sorry 21. Um, so that is 120 ramp to a temperature of 700, zero soak. Segment 2, 150 ramp, 1100 degrees centigrade and zero soak. Then 80 degree ramp up to 1200 with a 30 minute soak and then a cool down at 100 down to 1000 with no soak. End. Here we go. I love this noise. And she's off. Segment one. Oh, I love this bit. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>